Welcome back. Well, what is happening with the Henry Review into taxation? The long-awaited review of our tax system, the precursor for the controversial mining tax, and now the subject of a major tax summit next year due to the deal between the Gillard government and the independents. Joining me now to discuss what might happen with Henry is tax expert Craig Wilford from Chartered Accountant Nexia Court & Co. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, you've made a bit of a study of this. Um, mm. You've done a scorecard. You've done seminars around the country. Let's just start off with, I mean, Henry, got a bit of a bad rap because of the mining tax. Um, just sum up, first of all, your first impressions before we got into the politics of it. Was it a good review or not? Well, I think um, you probably have to start with the, the the fact that the general consensus in the first place was was with the, the existing uh, tax regime and how it was basically becoming increasingly unworkable. There was uh, a great deal of inefficiency and, uh, and, and basically there was a costliness in there that was affecting everybody. And so that was the, the impetus, I guess, for the Henry Review. You know, going back to the original uh, period in which the Income Tax Assessment Act was first written in 36. Oh, we don't want to go back to that. Let's, <laughs> let's keep it. Actually, maybe yeah. we should move forward on it. Um, we know we had the Henry Review. We had the, uh, out of uh, 160 recommendations or whatever, only three came out just before Kevin Rudd was axed, the mining tax overshadowed everything. Yeah. Then we had the new mining tax. Then we had an election campaign where <laughs> basically Labor said that's enough. A tax wasn't a big issue. Quite. But the independents have come out and they've said they want a tax summit. So so now we're back with Henry on the agenda. So let's look forward. Yeah. We've got a tax summit next year. I find that extraordinary when we just had a two-year investigation into the tax system. Cool. Do we need that or should we just work on Henry for a start? Well, unfortunately, we absolutely do need it. And why do we Why do we need it? It's because uh, we, we, uh, the, the political parties at the time lacked that political fortitude to actually adopt those proposals that were in Henry, which was a very robust system. As you say, a couple of years of that took place and 1,500 different submissions. You would think that that would be a reasonable basis for how they've come up with what was genuine taxation reform in this country. Well, if they didn't have the political will to implement Henry when it was brought out, what makes you think a tax summit's going to have any difference? I mean, they could just park those recommendations away too. That is uh, unfortunately true, in fact, precariously so now with the, as you say, the balance of power, you know, uh, in with the monopoly parties. I guess the question is as to uh, to what extent we're going to find some of that uh, that leadership skills from uh, whether it's the minority parties or the, the Labor Party or indeed maybe even the opposition that actually leads us through to some genuine uh, basis for uh, adopting some of those other measures. Now just you sound a bit sceptical about this tax <laughs> review. Let's just say this was obviously a political sop to the independents. What you're saying is it's not really necessary and what's the point of it if you didn't implement the last one? Is that basically it? Look I, uh, I hate to be a cynical uh, observer on this process uh, Janine but uh, unfortunately yes there, it was all there for for the, uh, for the taking and uh, they simply weren't adopted. We've got this situation where political parties uh, you know, are cherry picking those particular things that, uh, that, uh, that meet their political uh, uh, sensitivities but not necessarily looking at the whole package and what would be best for Australia as a whole. Okay, well let's look at the really touchy point on this upcoming tax summit. Businesses said the GST must be included. That's sort of a political no-no. Let's start on that. Should the GST be on the table at this tax summit? Well, that was a, it's an interesting point because uh, it was actually excluded from the mandate of the uh, of the original Henry Review. Why? Because it was, again, politically too sensitive to be in there in the first place. Uh, so the fact that it's actually being pushed to uh, to be part of it again now, I think, is a really good thing because in order, if you are going to have a a meaningful dialogue about taxation reform, you need to be looking at all four pillars of the the tax policy: personal taxes, business tax, rents on resources, and of course, consumption taxes. Well, what about the cynic who suggested on this show that? That fine, put GST on the review and then just ignore it. You can say we put it up there, but we have no intention of doing anything. Does that, does that sound like a political plot? Well, that would be uh, suggesting that it's a, this is going to be form over substance, Janine. Oh. I can't believe for a minute that that would be the... Uh. OK, let's look at the other one that's the, the other issue that they haven't sorted out, the mining tax. I mean, that really, when you think of Henry Review, that's synonymous with Henry. Um, firstly, tell me... Am I wrong in thinking that in all those years and all those submissions, the mining industry themselves seem to indicate they needed a new form of tax that could be improved? Well, quite so. They were uh, uh, right from the outset. They were um, the, we were in the unusual position of having an industry that was proactively putting up its hand and saying that, yep, we were open to the fact that there can be some new tax of some form. Um, so it was there for, for the offing. I guess the, the question is to, uh, to the extent of that, uh, that tax proposal is the, uh, the, the moot point. Well, from your expert point of view, was the 
way, the actual tax the problem or the way it was being implemented? Well, it's, it's clearly um, uh, exposed exactly how politically sensitive the, uh, the area is um, and clearly the, um, the impact on, the, on uh, mining and uh, the extent of how much uh, economic activity is, uh, is predicated on that and, uh, and jobs that, that come out of it is, has clearly touched a raw nerve in the public. Do you think the Mark II was a rush job or was it acceptable? Can we live with Mark II, which Labor seems to want to push through, or can they do better? Business says throw it out and start again. Which camp are you in? Well, it's a question of, um, of which uh, objective you're looking at, I think, because if you're looking for something that they're actually going to have consensus of getting something through, I think you could say that, uh, that this is actually going to meet that objective. But if you're taking a step back and looking at whether it fits in with genuine taxation reform in this country, that's, uh, that's another question because, uh, you know, that was the centrepiece of the Henry Review proposals. And now, you know, how much uh, lesser revenue we're going to be uh, extracting from that proposal. You're as difficult as my last guest to get a straight answer. <laughs> Mining tax, mark two or throw it out? Which one? I would prefer that it's thrown out and that we go back to, uh, right back to the beginning and have everything on the agenda and genuinely look at what's the, uh, the most efficient So some kind of mining country. tax, but a different one to the one being proposed now. Quite so. But you do think we need some kind of mining tax? I do. Okay, that's interesting. Let's look at, if you had to name on your wish list, the other things out of the Henry Review you want to see at the summit taken up and some action on. That's a pretty easy one for me to answer because I'd like all of them to be taken up. Because <laughs> no way you're going to get 170. Well, I, I, they they the, ruled out half of them anyway, didn't they? Well, uh, well that's, uh, that's part of the, uh, the interesting part of this process is that uh, there was 20-odd proposals that were rejected out of hand. But, but now with, uh, with this tax summit, all of those are potentially back on the negotiation uh, Okay, well, on the it's a silly question list. to say your wish list. The politically palatable mm. wish list, what do you think should work? <laughs> politically palatable, <laughs> nicely, uh, nicely phrased. Uh, oh, realistic, the ones you think could get up that they, if they had a bit of guts. Okay, okay. well on the individual side, I think there's, uh, there's clearly scope for, um, for simplifying and streamlining the marginal tax rate system. There's a proposal in the Henry Review to move to something close to a flat rate tax proposal and I think that would that along with the, uh, the uh, automatic deductions for work expenses could rule out a significant number of people that simply don't need to take part in the, the income tax system at all and that would be a great starting measure. Um, along with that the reduction of superannuation taxes uh, from 15% to 7.5 uh, to and, um, and the corporate tax rate getting down to 25 now that's that's probably a, a bridge too far I realise but uh, but that would be ideal from a we have to leave it there. I look forward to uh, seeing how much of your wish list gets up. That was Craig Wilford from Nexia and Co. Nexia Court and Co. Thank you. That's all we have time for tonight. Join me tomorrow night. The next few years are critical for Australian businesses. Our ports, rail and road infrastructure simply isn't up to the task ahead. So what are we doing about it? I'm Annabelle Hepworth. I'm a senior business writer with The Australian.